Hi, I'm Bonnie Lynn Linke, an independent Stamping Up demonstrator, and welcome to my studio, Stamping with Bonnie Lynn. Today I am going to show you another Easter card using the Daffodil Daydreams stamp set. But first, I wanted to remind you there's still time to earn this um, sampler, the directions for it, and for three other cards. And to do that, you need to spend $75 in my online store. And also, you need to use the host code for the month, which is H-Z-R-F-N-P-J-P. -P, and I'll leave it up here for you. And you can stamp it. You can go to Stamping with Bonnie Lynn, and that's B-O-N-N-I-E-L-Y-N-N.com. And there's a link on the page on about midway down on the right-hand side underneath the annual catalog that will take you to my store. So um, that's how you can earn the directions for this and everything. First, it was to buy the suite, but the embellishments, which you need for one of the cards, is out of stock, but they're supposed to be in stock on March 13th, and you have through March 24th to purchase it to earn these items the PDFs free. So, okay. And isn't it cute? I just love it. I love the stamp set. I love the paper. I have so much of the paper. And also, um, oh, no, I think my class will be, there's still time to sign up for my class. If you live in the Treasure Valley area of Idaho, the class is March 18th and it is $30 and you receive a full pack of paper or $22 and you get a half pack of paper. But there's the host code. I'll try to leave it up there where you can see it. It may get pushed out of the way. But okay, the card we are going to do. Whoops, I have it in a plastic cover. Let me take that off so you guys can see better and turn on some more light now that I got that glass out of the way. So this is using the Daffodil Daydream stamp set, which is this one right here. You got two daffodil stamps, butterfly, Easter blessings, Happy Mother's Day, some um, oh, orangey dots like, and then this cool border. And so, and this is done on vellum. What I did, and there's a couple steps I'm skipping because I think you probably know how to do them, but I'm gonna walk you through it without actually doing the heat embossing. So, um, but we'll, first we're gonna work on the background. This background is a wax paper technique. And so I'm gonna start off by showing you how to do that. And let me, okay, what you need to do this background is you need two four and a quarter by five and a half pieces of white cardstock, and then you're going to trim them down after you um, after we progress to when they're almost ready to go on. You need an embossing folder that you like, and you can use any embossing folder you like. And I'll show you some more after we do this one. This one is the new one of the three new basic 3D embossing folders that is an online exclusive only and it's $30 for three of them. And this one is almost kind of like stars. Um, remember back years ago when they had the plastic fans on a um, little pole and the wind would make them blow? I mean, we're going back a lot of years for this. That's what this, the pinwheels, that's what it reminds me of. This one is a lot of lines that um, go this way and this way. And they're not solid lines. They're broken up. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's really cool. I like it. And then this one is um, almost like a polka dot one that they had a long time ago. And then the pinwheel one. Okay, so what you do is you take this and this is a piece of wax paper and the size of the wax paper is four and four and three quarters by six inches. I know it doesn't like it, but that's how big the folders are, I believe. And you just lay it in there and close it. 
Okay, and then we want to put it through the embossing machine, and I happen to have my cut and emboss machine right here. So we will do this, and we're actually going to turn it this way, so I need to clean this. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have anything that looks like that on video. Okay, you want to use your number one plate right here, then your embossing folder, and then you want to use a number four plate. And you'll see I have written on it, use with embossing folders and plate number one only. This is um, for my students because they get confused how they're supposed to do it. And as long as it's a 3D embossing folder, I, use, I have that plate out there. So we just emboss that piece of wax paper. So let's get this out of the way. And we'll get this out of the way. Now I have not used this embossing folder yet, so it's all gonna be new to me. And this is what it's gonna look like when you bring it out. You're, the, it's fully embossed. So what you're gonna do th next then, make sure you leave the um, front side up, but you're gonna get two pieces. You're gonna get the front one, the emboss, and then the back side, the deboss one will go on there too. And you just put it so that the wax paper is covering both pieces of cardstock. And then you wanna take a piece of paper. This is just regular copy paper. You wanna fold it in half, just like so. And take this and you put this in the middle. And then, um, you let you, you can you see when I put it in there, I moved it. So I kind of um, set it close to the edge. Okay. You want your iron to be heated up. And I'm not going to actually iron this because I don't know what I did with my um, one um, portable ironing pad. But you want your iron. Now, see, I have settings off synthetic, silk, wool, cotton, and linen. I put it on wool, and I have it so there's no steam. And then you want to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just like that, after it's hot. Okay. And then what happens is, let me trade this off here. You open it up. And you want to remember which paper is which. The top one is the one if you kept it in the right direction. You can't really see anything. Either you can maybe, if you look real close once you're done, you can see some lines on there. So that means the wax came off. And you can look at your wax paper until it's not glossy or anything anymore. Um, so you know it's been used. So we're gonna get that out. And now you're gonna take this. Now, um, let's see. The card base we're using today is Highland Heather, but I already have my um, background for that one that I wanted. I used a different embossing folder that I'll show you. So I want to do this one a different color. I want to see what the pink looks like on this. So you start off and look at that. Isn't that cool the way the design comes up? Oh, I'm really glad because I just got this order in the other day and I hadn't <laughs> until yesterday have had a chance to um, go through them. So I hadn't used it and this it's really pretty. Oh, I love this. I think I like this more than my other embossing folders. And you can do this to any shade that you want, but you wanna do the whole thing. And the reason why I don't cut the paper um, the right size up front is because if you look at this edge over here, you can see where um, I didn't have it all the way over or something on there. So see, I'll just trim it from that edge then. And the same over here. 
um, so yeah, you can pick what you want to, which sides you want to trim off of and how much you want to trim off. Now, I recommend that you take an eighth of an inch off of both the length and the width. But like on this one, um, I think I may take a little bit off of each side. So I may take off a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. But it's totally up to you what you put it at. Oh, I'm having fun. I really like this. And the reason why I wanted a pink one is because I have a class and um, actually my class will be before you see this video and I needed a sample of a card with the pink and so I wanted to use this one to do a Mother's Day card. And that's why I am doing what I'm doing. I don't mean to trick you or anything, but isn't that gorgeous? Look at that, the way it came out. And I put some areas lighter and some darker. That's intentional. And then I would just trim this down. And let me get my trimmer, and I'll go ahead and do that to show you. And I love these brushes for um, spreading ink around. It is wonderful. I'm sorry I didn't have my trimmer within hand's reach. I um, totally forgot. I still have COVID brain between anesthesiology and... Um, and having anesthesia and, and I get it for the third time next week in just like three months so or maybe it's closer to four months now so yeah it's <laughs> okay so I totally forgot my niece's name the other day I had to, my sister had to remind me of it and that's so unlike me okay so this must have been bigger than Four and a quarter. Okay. Let's see. I don't want that much off, so. Oh. This must have been a little bit wider than four and a quarter to begin with, so that's okay. That works out good because I'm able to trim off everything, so. <laughs> that means I have a smaller one that is shorter. Or this could have just been one that was left over. And let's see, this is right at five and a half inches. And I like taking a tiny bit off of both sides. That way you can't, it just, I think, looks cleaner for what I want. Okay, there we go. And that's all you do to trim it. So it is now four and one eighth by five and three eighths. And that's the right size. Okay, so that's how you do the wax paper technique. And let me show you a couple others that I've done. Okay, you've seen the yellow one there. Okay, this one right here, I believe is the back side of the cane weaver. So this is the deboss side. So it looks a little bit different. And you know what we can do? What did I do with that other? Hmm. Uh oh, I don't know what I did. Okay, let me just take real quick. We'll use the pink again. And this, and I'm just going to do it in the middle. This is the deboss side of the folder that we just um, did. The one I said that looked like pin rails. And I wanted you to be able to see in the same color what both sides look like. So we'll just do that little bit. Get rid of that. Okay. So this is the emboss side, the front front of the um, embossing folder, and this is the deboss side. So both sides will make a pretty background. You can't go wrong. So now you see what that's like. Okay, so this is the deboss side of the cane weave 3D um, embossing folder that's in the spring catalog right now. This here is an um, old one. This is swirls and curls. 
And that's the front side of it. And this is the deboss side. So emboss and deboss sides. So you get a different look with each piece of paper. And then we have, these are our older ones, spring flowers, which is an old one. And that's right here. And I don't know what happened to the other one. Oh, I have it on this one. This is the deboss. This was the emboss side. And then I actually taught a class on this when I lived in Arizona too, my club group. And it was so much fun. Okay, this is the Tuffeted 3D one. And so this is one side right here. And this was fresh freesia that I did it in. But then I realized, oh, I'm doing my card in Highland Heather. So then I took the other side. And I don't know which one is embossed and which one is debossed on these. Um, they kind of look alike. But so it's just pretty cool. And I just thought that would make a pretty background for an Easter card. So, okay. And that's how you do it. Different looks. So much fun. Okay, so we have this done. So let's go ahead and put it on our card real quick. And I appreciate you joining me today for my card. And when you're done watching this, if you like it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment, I would love that. YouTube loves it too. We want them to keep posting all of us at no charge, which is nice. Okay. So I just lay this on here. Get it centered. My borders aren't real wide, but that's what I wanted. If you want a wider see more of the card base and you just make it you know a four by five and a quarter size and down in the um comp above the comments where i have a write-up about this video you will see that i put all the card paper dimension sizes and the supplies that i use okay so we have that and next thing we need to do we need to cut um, using the scallop contours, color and contour, uh, it is the dies for the color and contour stamp set. What I did is I used the next to largest die. And as you see, you're not wasting any paper hardly with this. So run it through your cut and emboss. And remember, you don't want a straight edge going in. So if you cut the piece of paper, to the size you need, just put it in at an angle and it's easier on your machine, it's easier on your dies, and then it will come out looking like that. So now we have that, so we'll set this aside. And I don't have any deal with stamp and storage, but this is what I use for my dies. I like it that they have it on cardboard behind it. The magnet is really strong and I get those storage folders. I tried the um, vent covers from Home Depot. That was a disaster. The dust, besides the dust stain on them, the magnets didn't stick real good. So I didn't like that. Okay, and then what we want to do is we just kind of want to center this on the background. I realized the um, stamp and sale would be faster. For some reason, I like the tape. One of these days, though, I will probably switch. Okay. So I'll just... And our greeting is going to go down at the bottom. So, you know, if you put it a little bit higher, that's okay too. But to remove the tear and tape, I do from this corner first. Press it down. It's now in place. And you just. And if you wonder, well, 
you've, you're pressing it down. What if you end up, you find out it's crooked or something? I use um, undo if I are, like if I would have put it on, you know, if this would have been stamped or something, I put it on upside down. Um, I've done that before. I use undo to remove sticker tables and it's a sticker tape and label remover. And they sell a refill for this. And so I just keep refilling this bottle. It's wonderful. And I use it on stickers on stuff I buy too that I want to get off. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. And I want to show you how I set up to do the embossing. Okay, what I have here is my Stamparatus. And um, this is a piece of vellum right here. Now, um, my Stamparatus, I wasn't getting a good stamp. So I put, like, I use this all the time, and it just, I don't, I need a new pad. So with my photopolymers, I need it to have some extra cushion because I haven't bought me a new stamp pad yet. So I just cut down three pieces of cardstock. Um, this is a cheap cardstock that I use to put in front of my card before I mail it. So um, that's... I didn't use my good cardstock for that. And then I just, my vellum is four and a half by four and three quarters. Okay, now for you who are not familiar with it, you just lay your stamps like so on it. And actually I'm gonna put this one over here because I got the magnet and that way um, my, the width, I don't need it down there. So there we go. And then you just close it. And then for heat embossing, you take your embossing buddy and you rub it all over your vellum, your paper, even if it's paper, you rub it all over there. You ink up your stamps with the VersaMark, go on and stamp it, rub it. And if you notice that it, because you can look at it and see if it's um, a good stamp or not, and if it isn't, my paper is not didn't go any place with that heavy magnet on it. So I re-ink and I do it again if I need to. And then I keep my um, embossing. Oh, I've already moved it out for my class. Um, I keep them in little plastic containers or a, I think a five by five or a six by six in size with the lid. And so I just then put the paper down inside it and it's just no mess. Um, I also have the embossing addi additions kit. Um, the embossing buddy comes with that. You also get um, tweezers, you get a brush, and I do have my students use that in the class. It's just easier for them. Okay, because they like pouring the embossing powder on top. So there you go. That is how you set up to heat emboss, and then you use your heat tool to melt it. Hold it about five or six inches away. Don't get it too close. You don't want to burn your um, paper. Okay, and then you want to color these. Now I had actually, well, I had colored one of them already, but let me see. I actually, okay. I already have my purple ones colored, but I wanna show you how I did it. So here is one that I heat embossed. So I'm gonna show you on this little one how I did it. And let's see, what color should we use? Let's do the leaves first. And we wanna use dark, that's light. We wanna use um, dark granny apple green. And I'll show you why the dark versus the light. Now I like using the firm end for coloring on the back of vellum. This is the light color that I'm gonna put right on this bud. Now I know um, some people think, well maybe that should be colored, the color of your flowers. But no, I, I don't think so. So I am um, color it the color of my leaf. And then I'm just gonna do this leaf here just to show you the difference in colors. Okay, if you can see this, you can't really see the color on that one that good. 
And we are gonna put it against a white background, so even against there. You can see a little bit, but I wanted you to see what the difference looks like between the light and the dark. I like the dark because it just shows up a little bit more. So, but I'm gonna do the um, small flower so it doesn't take as much time. And I do my leaves first. But it doesn't matter if you which one you do first. Just do them all. And you're on the back side. The embossed side is right here. So we're coloring from behind. So you can go over the white. It won't hurt. But the reason why I say to use the firm end is that I feel that you have more control over where the ink is going. Okay, now that one was easy to color. When you're doing the big flower, you got these little spots right there and right there. And right down in here, you'll see there's a little bit of stem of your leaf showing through, not the stem. And you go like so, just like so. And then um, just take your time, you have a stem from the flower right there. You have one right here. And you have one right here. And then, as I said, the bud. And then there's more green on that one too, but I just wanted to show you to look for those little spots. Okay, and then, let's see. Let's do this one in pink. I like the pink. Whoops, that's the wrong end. And you just color it all in. And as I said, if you get on the white, it doesn't matter because it won't show through. So I just color over the whole thing like that. And um, I know if you look at daffodils, photos of them, your center is going to be lighter than your um, the, the petals that are down. But let's see something. How I hadn't tried the light polish. This is polished pink I'm using. Okay. Let's see what that's like. Let's hold it up against a piece of white paper so you can see. Yeah, see, oh, that would have been pretty too. Maybe I'll just do the light on the bottom part. So I think I will do, because this part and this center in photographs is usually lighter and you can actually give it, a, come back and give it a second coat after that dries. But I'm gonna finish using the dark pink for up here, means I already started that way. Then I'll do these petals. And then, you know, after you're done and you look at it and you think, oh, maybe I want it a little bit darker, go back over it and give it a second coat. It doesn't take long. So, and this is the stamping blends that I'm using. And I'm, so actually the pink light polish, um, what is it called? Yeah, polished pink. The light one showed up um, better than what the light Highland Heather or the um, Daffodil Yellow did. Okay, and I'm just giving this part right down here a second coat of the light pink. Okay, so let's see how it looks. And there you go. That's how you color on vellum from the back side with your alcohol markers. And that's really pretty. I like that. Ooh, I can't wait to do more in pink. Okay, so that's how you color. And I also did one, and I believe, oh yeah, I couldn't find my gra granny apple green markers when I went to color the ones for today. 
Um, so I actually used Parakeet Party and I used the dark one. And so if you look at it, let's put, okay. That one was Granny Apple Green and this is Parakeet Party. You get a more vibrant green with the Parakeet Party. So, you know, I kind of like that. Hmm. Yeah, so it looks good. And there's any number of colors you can use. And what I do is I have a piece of vellum over here and I try the ink. This is the side I colored on. And then I tried the colors to see what it was gonna look like on here. After it dries, it seems to become a little bit more vibrant. Okay, so what you wanna do is you want to attach these to your paper. And I'm going to attach. Now I am gonna use my um, sail for this. Because they're colored, you're not gonna notice the tape as much. So I'm just gonna put some right there. And put some right there. And I'm not gonna press hard, let's see. I want this one down a little bit lower, I think, just like so. And then put some on here. Okay. All right, I like that. Okay, now we want a ribbon. So what I did is I took 11 inches of, let's see, which one is this? It is the crinkled seam binding ribbon. So let me bring my paper back. And um, let's see, we want Highland Heather. Okay, now I don't know. I'm gonna start with the light Stampin' Blend on my Highland Heather. And on my sample card here, I used the light daffodil delight. So I think the um, dark would just be too dark for springtime, in my opinion. And you just color it and you see it will color both sides. And this way you can have a custom look ribbon match all your cards you could leave it white if you if you um, want to but with that white background there I was I was afraid it wouldn't show up enough for what I wanted okay and I want to type a double bow and this is a whoops I hit this and I apologize I hope it's not too crooked now it is oh no I think that's a little bit better I'm sorry. Okay, this is my block two by four with a couple of dowels in it. And I just, <laughs> butterfingers. Okay, and I just wrap it around two times and then I tie it together. Just one time. All right, and there we go. Pull that out, get that out of the way. Purple's my favorite color. For Easter, I love purples, I love pinks, and yellows. And actually, I love pink for Mother's Day cards too. Okay, so you just arrange that the way you want it to look like. And you find your glue dots. Put that on there. And I like using something to pick it up with. I usually use the pointed end, but being this is the end I have out. And we'll just put it right up here. 
And I'm not gonna cut the ribbon off yet till after I get my greeting in. Okay, for the greeting, what I did is I got a piece of white cardstock. I find my stamp set and I'm using the Easter Blessings. So I put that on there. I get my Highland Heather ink. Try and get it straight. There we go. I didn't rock it, so I didn't get any lines, and I just tap, tap, tap to ink it up. Oh, and we're going to need that. So set that over there where it's out of my way. This. Okay. Next, I used my mini pocket envelopes. It's in the annual catalog. It makes mini pockets, but I use this die right here to cut it out on the cut and emboss machine. And here we go. So next what I want to do, I want to, because, okay, this, I, that's pretty, but I wanted it to stand out more. So what I did is I um, got my Highland Heather and I have a dauber and I went around the edge and inked it. We don't use this technique much more. At least I don't, but it used to do it all the time when I first started stamping. Because I could have cut a piece of cardstock and put it under there and it would have looked really pretty. But I just thought this would look kind of pretty too for a change. And my Easter cards are all going to um kids and grandkids. I didn't get the bunny um, set. I wish I would have. I have an 11 year old grandson. And um, so I don't know what kind of card I'm going to send him. I'm going to have to really think about it and come up with something. But I just may want to send him one made out of the um, Rejoice in Him stamp set. Make one out of that. Okay, so that is all set. So we're going to get a couple Stampin' Dimensionals. Okay, I want to turn this around. I like my pointed end better. There we go. Go on and remove the backings. And I do put it over top the ribbon and I offset it. I liked it offset more than in the middle. And I think I'll leave that. I'll cut that one a little bit shorter. I have a um, pair of scissors that is just for cutting ribbon. And it has a ribbon on there so that everybody knows not to use it for anything but ribbon. All right. And now we need some gems. And, you know, we, there are so many different ones out there. And, you know, I was going to put butterflies on it because I put the brash, brass, br brush butterflies on the last one. But I was just thinking if I can find them real quick. Hmm. Because we all have quite an assortment of them. I was looking for, oh... They had yellow and purple on them. I think it was gorgeous great, but you know, on this one here, it's the adhesive back gems. And I think that that would just look really pretty on here. So let me see. Put one up there. Put one there. right here and you know what the heck let's see oh now I don't think I am going to put a butterfly on it and that gem I just put down there disappeared 
Huh. That's okay. Let's see. I think I'll put it up here anyhow. And there we go. Okay, now we need to do the inside. And I thought, oh, I did do an inside. This is made out of the um, Rejoice in Him stamp set. And... Got a piece of white cardstock here. Okay, and to do this, I took the stamp of Jesus. I'm gonna bring my paper back here. And I need Sahara Sand ink. Here it is. Stamp it off because I don't want it real dark. And I had just re-inked my stamp pads the other day. And then I'm going to lightly stamp it right there. Just like so. Okay, and now I want... Um, I want to use He is Risen, but I want to see how dark it's going to stamp one time before... I do that. So let's stamp it on here just to see how dark it is. Yeah, that'll be dark enough. Because I thought about getting gorgeous grape and just stamp that right here. I like that. If you want to, you can um, stamp. Um, a daffodil down there or something but I think I'm just gonna leave that like that I like that um, you know let's try something else let's see where is my granny apple green ink hmm. I wonder if I have it down here I do I think this is it Okay, I like that. So I think what we're gonna do in this corner is go like so for a palm. And we'll do one, a little bit of one up here. I like that. And then for the envelope, being so I got the ink out, let's, um, I know I brought an envelope out, but I got more over here. Um, let's go on and stamp it one more time the palm down in that corner. All right, so we're all done stamping. All we need to do is move this mess out of the way. We need to just put this in here and I use, for this I use a quarter inch, I mean a eighth inch wide tape. It's not stamping up. Um, I can't remember the name of the company I get it from. I apologize. I know it was in Southern California. Okay, so there we go. And now we'll put this right here. If you don't have a Stamping Up demonstrator, I would love to be your Stamping Up demonstrator. I have a program that um, for every $25 you spend at a time, you get a bonus point. And once you reach 10 bonus points, um, I give you a $25 credit on your order. And so um, and that's a 10% savings for you guys and over time. All right. And I hope to start being able to offer in the next month or two um, a free 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 a PDF of three cards with every order you place um, 
once a month. They'll change monthly. So there we go. Okay. So this is the one that I had already made. And this is the one that we just did. Now this one had the um, brandy apple green for the um, leaves. This one has the parakeet party, which is more vibrant for it. But I love the colors on them. It's really pretty. And let's go back and look at this pink one we did now that it's dried some. See, we made these darker. This was a dark pink right there, but I only gave it one coat. These are two layers of the alcohol ink. And this right here is two layers of the light polished pink alcohol ink. So aren't they pretty? Very pretty. I like it. And this is the granny apple green. So any one of these three colors is going to make a beautiful card. I hope you like this. Remember, please give me a thumbs up. My host code for the month of March is right here. And if I can help you with anything at all, please email me, bonnie at stampingwithbonnielynn.com. And I appreciate you following me and um, watching my videos. And if you want my emails, go to stampingwithbonnielynn.com. And you'll have a pop-up on my website where you can sign up for my emails. Thank you much. Bye.